Uh, there's nothing like going to pick up a piece of furniture at 9.30 at night on a Sunday. I think this month is gonna kill me. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name is Miley. If you are new here, I do a new DIY video every single week. And if you didn't see last week's video, I am spending the entire month of November flipping furniture. I have never flipped furniture for resale, so I am using this month to try out different forms of furniture flipping and just challenge myself to flip as many pieces as I can. Oh, and I did go ahead and set a profit goal because why not? I am trying to make enough money to completely cover the cost of the floors that I am putting in my basement for my basement makeover series. So I have to make $2,800 flipping furniture and I'm still very doubtful, but I am going to give it my flipping all, pun intended. So let's get to this week's furniture flips. Oh wait, hold on. Quick update, the tables that I flipped last week have officially sold and that's the only update. So let's get to this first item. Okay, up first I have a gossip bench and I got this thing for 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. The lady had it listed for 40, but when we were messaging back and forth, she said she would give it to me for 20 if I could come pick it up right then and there. So I went and picked it up at almost 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday. It was really fun. <laughs> And this thing sold before I even got started on it. My sister saw it in the background of a photo I sent her and instantly wanted it. So she got to influence a little bit of what I did with this piece. Okay, week two. Why does it feel like I have been furniture flipping for five months at this point? I definitely started out this week with a new sense of confidence. I had three pieces to work on and I definitely wanted to do more on each piece than I did last week. Last week, I was afraid to go all out with each piece because I was afraid the monetary return just wouldn't be worth it. And this week, well, I just didn't care. I was hoping the money I made on each piece would be worth all of this effort, but I got the money and the time out of my head and just focused on having fun. I love more dramatic transformations, so I knew I was gonna have a ton of fun working on all these pieces this week. The first piece, the gossip bench, also set the mood. I knew it was already sold going into the project, so that really helped me to just enjoy the process of transforming this piece. This bench ended up taking way more time than I thought it would. I was able to quickly get the seat and back cushion reupholstered and this is when I ran into my first issue. The back wood piece basically fell apart when I was trying to get the cushion separated for reupholstering it. And this one small thing made it so that this was the first item I started and the last item I finished this week. And that's that's been a hard part about furniture flipping. Working with old furniture, you really never know how they're gonna act as you start to take them apart and work on them. One wrong move and something can break very easily. I did say my sister had a little bit of say on what I did with this piece, so by the time she saw it and claimed it as her own, I had already made up my mind on what I wanted to do to this piece. I had the fabric picked out and purchased, and the fabric was definitely more expensive, so my plan was to cut down on supply cost by using some paint I already had. Either I was gonna paint this using the leftover light gray paint from painting my kitchen cabinets, or I was gonna use the greenish gray paint that I used in my basement. But neither of those colors really fit the color scheme in her apartment, so she asked me to paint it a bluish gray color. And I picked out a few swatches and with my suggestions of what colors I thought would work best with the fabric, we picked out a paint together. And I got to work with my normal furniture painting method. And this particular piece, I used mainly a smaller brush the whole time because there's so many details on the legs and arms. I didn't want to get those all gooped up with paint. So it just made it easy to use a small brush for basically this whole piece. And that's what made this bench 
so deceivingly hard. It's not a big bench, so I thought it was going to be super quick and easy to paint, and it was not. It took a very long time. Everything was done on this bench, except for that dang wood piece that fell apart on me. And near the end of the week, Jordan, that's my husband, he helped me glue this thing back together. He's really good at small detail stuff and, you know, making sure things are structurally sound. So having him take the lead and help me glue this thing back together was super helpful. After 24 hours of letting the wood glue sit, I could finally finish up this bench and paint the back piece and get the cushion back on this bench. I really love the way this bench turned out and the most important part, so does my my sister. I think the new color makes all of the details in the arms and legs really stand out and the fabric I picked out I think adds a little elegant touch. And the second item, the secretary desk. I got this desk for 40 bucks and the best part about this piece, it comes with the original key. Unfortunately, only one of the lock mechanisms still actually works, but still, it comes with the original key. I just thought that was so cool. I did struggle on what to do with this thing. Another reason I'm trying furniture flipping is to explore other styles and to challenge myself creatively would this thing look really dope black? Yes, yes it would. But I didn't paint it black and I kind of went all out with this piece. Okay, when I got the secretary desk, I instantly fell right into my normal Miley trap of wanting to paint this desk black. I saw several similar desks online that people painted black and they all looked super dope but I really wanted to try something new and explore some color. The gossip bench not only set the mood for making me really enjoy the process and the transformation, it also sent me down a path of trying some new colors and busting out of my creative rut that I got myself into by always painting things black. Especially because I'm not even keeping these pieces, so it doesn't have to fit the color scheme of my house. And this was another piece that was also deceivingly hard to paint. All the intricate details on the legs and drawers and also the red was very hard to cover up. And this took several layers of paint to fully cover up the red. Normally, I only have to do two layers of primer and two layers layers of paint to cover up everything, but in some areas there's even four coats of paint on this thing. And don't even get me started with painting this little shelf thing that goes inside the desk. This was so hard to paint and took a lot of patience painting inside each little tiny section. And like I said before, I did struggle with coming up with exactly what I wanted to do with this desk. This desk has a ton of details and I think it would look good no matter what I did. If I painted it black, it would look really good white, gray, green, even like a really bold color, like a hot pink. I love when people use modern colors on vintage furniture. The contrast always looks super cool. But while I was out getting paint for my sister's bench, I stumbled across this dark bluish gray color that I instantly got inspired by. And the vision for this desk just seemed to fall right into place. Because of all the details in this piece, I think it naturally lent itself to go all out and not just paint this thing. I wanted the desk to be the dark bluish gray with gold accents and I found this contact paper on Amazon that fit the color scheme so I wanted to add that to the inside of the desk and take this flip up a notch. I'm not the best with contact paper but I really wanted this thing to turn out super dope so I really took my time with this process and painstakingly tried to make sure everything was perfect. The first piece was pretty easy, but getting the contact paper to lay nicely on the inside of the desk was another task. It was a lot of work, but look how cool that looks, and it just takes this piece to a whole new level. Another thing, gold paint. 
like nice opaque gold paint is very expensive and I only really needed a little bit of it. So taking some gold spray paint that I already had, I sprayed that onto a plate and used a brush to lightly brush that onto the molding. It ended up being way cheaper and looking just as nice as the really expensive paint. And my favorite thing that I did to this desk was quite literally the most simple fix that I did. When I first got the desk, I opened it up and noticed right away that the desk piece tilted down. And I came up with this whole plan to fix it so that the desk would lay level. But when I took the brackets off to put the contact paper on, I noticed that the person who last fixed up this piece put the brackets on the wrong way. You can see right there, in the brackets, there's a bend in the metal, and that's not supposed to be bending up, it's supposed to be bending down so that it lays on the desk and actually holds the piece up. So even though I did all of these changes to this desk, that was actually my favorite thing I did. And talk about a transformation. I'm obsessed with how this desk turned out. It hasn't sold yet, but at this point it's only been listed for a few hours. But I really hope it sells for a good price and all of this work was worth it. I definitely took a little bit of a gamble putting in this much work, but I'm hoping the right person will come along and want it. Okay, we are ending this week on a high note. A very high note. So I got this hutch on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks from seriously the nicest man. I loved all the details in this piece and I was definitely getting some farmhouse vibes. So that is the style I went for. Okay, the final piece of the week. I was really hoping to do more flips this week, but the flips I did do were just so time consuming that even these items were a struggle to get done in a week. Also, another thing I've noticed that is incredibly hard about furniture flipping is all of the moving parts. The amount of things you have to juggle to furniture flip is astounding. One, you have to find the pieces you want to flip, and then you have to arrange when and where to pick them up and something you have to take into consideration is if the piece is worth it for how long it's gonna take you to go pick it up then once you get the piece you have to figure out what you're gonna do with it and that's when I start scouring the internet looking at all different sites my main inspiration has been coming from higher-end furniture places and trying to give my flipped pieces a similar look okay so then I have what I'm gonna do to the piece all planned out so then I have to actually do that, which has proven to, of course, be a lot of work. And then once I'm done with it, I have to stage it, take pictures, do the listing, and then make sure I'm quickly responding to people when they're interested in a piece. It's a lot of moving parts, and my brain is fried, and it's only week two. Oh, also, on top of all of this work, you know, I'm a real person with a life and another job on top of all of this work. So let's just say the month of November November, I'm not gonna get much sleep and if you are curious for some more behind the scenes stuff and also want to get some sneak peeks of the flips that I'm doing throughout the week go follow me on Instagram I've been posting some more behind the scenes stuff on there but I'm not just gonna talk about all the hard things about furniture flipping there have been some really awesome things about furniture flipping one I feel very inspired by trying out all these new styles and brands out of my comfort zone and my absolute favorite part is all the amazing people I've met I'm not sure if this is everyone's experience but I've met the nicest people like the man that sold me this hutch Jordan and I went to pick it up together and we ended up talking to him for about 20 minutes he was moving and downsizing so he showed us some more pieces he had for sale and I also got another piece from him and I learned that this hutch was from his parents and they got it in the 50s. He was just one of the many really nice people that I've met and I'm not sure if I give off a furniture flipping vibe but people have just also been offering me free pieces on top of the thing I'm picking up. Hey I'm, I'm not complaining though. 
I'll take it. And this hutch was three of three on deceiving me. I didn't do anything crazy to this piece. I stripped the top and the drawers and restained them. And then I painted the rest using the greenish gray paint that I had left over from my basement makeover. But because of the surface area, painting this thing took forever. I felt like I was back in my kitchen painting all of my cabinets again. But I'm super happy with how this last piece turned out. The wood and the paint combo I think looks really beautiful together and the new hardware definitely takes it up a notch. This was really the only piece this week that I had to stage so I moved it into my kitchen and staged it like it was a coffee bar. The desk I really just let that thing speak for itself and of course the gossip bench I just had to text a few pictures to my sister and that was it. I'm so happy with how each one of these flips turned out. I think they are all so different and I am so proud of myself that I did not paint a single item black. But this week was very challenging and I'm still trying to find the balance to all this. I think next week I'm gonna combine the first two weeks, do one harder flip like this week, and then have the rest be easier flips like the first week. I hope you guys liked this video and thanks for all the support thus far on the series. Let me know which flip this week was your favorite in the comments down below. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys!